So today I found out what makes the tide high or low. Apart from God, the moon is pulling on the waves like it's using an invisible rope. Isn't that incredible? I thought it was. Just thought I'd share that with you. Also, I'd like to talk about my ongoing dramas. I never asked to have an argument with a Muslim. I just wanted to talk about the history of the Islamic sultans and how Islam spread throughout the world. I didn't even want to get into all the gory details. I personally find all culture and all religion interesting and I think we've all got something to learn from each other. But this dude just keeps on berating me and baiting me and regurgitating the same useless information. It just makes me sick to the stomach. And I really want to walk on the road of peace but he just wants to walk on the road of war because... I told him that I'm not interested in continuing down the path of this topic and he keeps on going back to the same old topic and he keeps on spreading the same old lies and it really makes me sad and mad and I don't know how to deal with it so I'm telling the world because I don't have a psychologist anymore and it's not like I can even tell my psychologist because my psychologist that I was going to is an atheist so it's not like she would even understand why this is a problem for me that somebody is trying to change my religion because she would say that she has no religion even though to not have a religion is a religion in itself if you think it through because it actually takes faith to believe that God doesn't exist as much as it takes faith to believe that he does exist and it actually takes more faith to believe that God doesn't exist than to believe that God does exist because the evidence is all around us that God does exist I don't have a problem with Muslims I've got Muslim friends friends who know when to back off when it comes to talking about religion friends who are more interested in fashion who are more interested in movies and music who actually have something interesting and worthwhile to talk about rather than just rabbiting on about the same old lies conversations that go round in circles and go nowhere fast It's hard to tell whether we should be in raging culture or engaging culture. I think we can do both. You have to judge your method by the results of the fruit that it's yielding. See there's some preachers in the past that have played hardball and they've called people names and that's convicted them and caused them to fall down on their knees in repentance and finish their prison sentence because until we knew Jesus all of us were prisoners I know my God isn't ashamed of me I know I'm making him proud at least when I'm doing his work I know when I'm making him ashamed when I'm ashamed of him because he says in his word whoever denies me on earth I will deny him before my father in heaven and say I never knew him or I never knew her I never want God to say that about me I'm proud to call myself a Christian we're not Christians unless we have Christ in us that's what Christian means 
Originally, Christian was used as an insult by pagans because they called us little Christs. And that's, in fact, what we are called to be. We are called to be imitators of Christ. He said, Be followers of God, little children, and walk in love. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love for one another. I have love for people from all religions. I don't always express that love in the best way. All of us make mistakes. By making that statement, I'm not making an excuse for my actions. I'm just saying it isn't always easy navigating this thing of trying to represent Christ in this world. I know God tells us to speak the truth in love. When people are speaking lies, you have to speak the truth even if the truth hurts. It's hard being called a liar. It's hard being called a worshipper of the devil, I get it. But unless you worship Jesus, that's exactly what you are. You're going to hell. You're going to be tortured for all eternity. So get right before you let, get left behind. It's that serious. Now until you stop breathing and until your heart stops beating, you've got a certain amount of second chances to get your life right with God. But those second chances aren't unlimited. Eventually the sand is going to reach the bottom of the hourglass and it won't be tipped upside down because, sorry Hindus, there's no such thing as reincarnation. We don't come back. You're not going to be a cat. You're not going to be a dog. You're not going to be a bird. You're not going to be a plane. You're not going to be Superman. You're not going to be super. You're not going to be Superman. There's no such thing as an uber Minsk. Sorry, Nietzsche. God isn't dead. He is alive. The very fact that you're breathing and watching this video is proof that he's alive. Because breath cannot exist with that Ruach, the spirit of God, breathing all living things into life. Thank you Adonai for giving us life. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your peace. Thank you Lord God for helping me fight my battles. Even when it seems impossible, I know it's possible with you. Thank you Lord God for the love that you show me. Even though I don't deserve it, thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for making it possible for me to live a new life. I'm not the same old me that I used to be. I'm not that same old guy who struggled with his sexual identity. I'm a brand new person. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And you can be redeemed too, if you're not already. And if you are, rejoice! Be proud of it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Doesn't mean you're a boastful or prideful person just because you're proud of the fact that Jesus lives inside your heart. It's a reason to celebrate. He's better than any drug. He's my greatest addiction. He's the love of my life. I'm his bride and he is my groom. I've got an intimate, deep relationship with him that's deeper than the ocean. It's incredible to think of how much he loves us, that he would lay down his life for us. Even when we call him enemy and stranger, even when we spit in the face of his grace every time we do something that we know is wrong. Because he gave us a conscience, he gave us the ability to tell the difference between right and wrong, regardless of what society says. We know in our hearts that our genitalia determines whether we are a boy or a girl. We know 
that it feels natural when we're joined in sexual union with the opposite sex in the bond of marriage with just one member of the opposite sex not everyone has the privilege of knowing Jesus There's some who live with lies because the truth about who Jesus is has been distorted in their culture. They've never gotten the chance to know God for themselves. The Turkish people only have the Bible and the New Testament in their own language. And we've got 66 books. How often do we read them? How often do we... allow God's word to penetrate our hearts and completely consume us how often do we call out to God we who have the privilege of screaming I love you Jesus out loud without fear of persecution without fear of being locked in jail without fear of losing our jobs, without fear of being disowned by our families, without fear of having no hospital that will take us in, without fear of having no accommodation that will shelter us because they're too afraid to be associated with us, because they're too angry to be associated with us, because of what we represent, because of who we represent, because of the freedom that we represent that convicts them. Oh Lord God, how great is your love, how great is your peace, how great is your mercy, how wonderful you are, how impossible to describe you are, how incredible is your majesty. It's impossible to wrap my head around your awesomeness, the fact that all the libraries in the world cannot contain your knowledge. They can't contain all the miracles that you've done, that you're doing 24-7. Thank you, Lord, for all the lies that you're setting free right now. All the dead people you're raising to life. All the babies you're bringing into the world, guiding the hands of doctors and nurses. All those mothers you're convicting before they kill their babies in the womb. Thank you, Lord, for changing their minds. Thank you, Lord, for waking up the consciences of those that have allowed their conscience to become dead inside. Thank you, Lord God, for showing me grace and mercy even though I don't deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for changing the way I relate to little girls. Changing the way I relate to fully grown women. Changing the way I relate to my parents and my sister. Thank you, Lord God, that you are changing me in the ever-passing moment. Thank you, Lord, that every day I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. Present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. Thank you, Lord God, that you never reject us. You always accept us. Thank you, Lord, that it's our mistakes that throw us into hell. It's never you. Thank you, Lord, that you want to have a living, breathing relationship with all of us. Thank you, Lord God, for being willing to fight for us. Thank you, Lord, that you're pleading on our behalf. You're crying out for us, Lord God. I'm sorry for all the times that I break your heart with my sin, with my bad attitude. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your abundant love. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. What does it mean to be in God's house? It's not just a building. If Jesus lives in your heart, then you're in communication with God. If you're chilling with somebody else talking about Jesus, then you're at church. Your heart is the Ark of the Covenant. 
even if you're in prison, God can find you there. You can be more free than somebody on the outside of a jail cell if Jesus lives in your heart. His salvation gives us wings. He brings peace despite our trials and tribulations. He brings peace to every nation. He changes situations around. Remember, no matter who is president, he is always on the throne. He is always king of kings and we worship him alone. Peace out.